Kenai Lake is a glacially carved lake in Yosemite National Park. In terms of an alpine lake, it's quite large and it also is quite deep. But one of the really unique things about it is that it's really accessible to the public. So as you're driving into Yosemite National Park after you come over Tioga Pass, you're going to drive right by Tenaya Lake and get one of the most beautiful views that you've ever seen. Blue sky lake that's probably a few hundred feet across and very long, surrounded by lodgepole forests distributed across big granite slabs that extend up into very prominent mountain peaks. Tenaya Lake has always been a favorite spot of mine. I love being out in the lake in a canoe or a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard. These are all really fun ways to explore the lake. I love to just swim in it. In the summer, I tend to jump in every time I'm driving by. So I really enjoy Tenaya Lake on a personal level. Yosemite National Park was created by and large for human enjoyment and to protect the landscapes within the park. But it turns out that in addition to that, park status means protection of archives of information about the past. For example, the Lyle and McClure glaciers, they are shrinking, but they were larger hundreds of years ago. You can look at trees and look at the fire history and the fire scars of these trees. And it turns out that one of the most important climate indicators we have of drought are these stumps here in Tenaya Lake. They actually look like stumps, but really they are the tops of trees that did not grow underwater. These are trees that grew in the Tenaya Lake Basin when the lake was 40 or 50 vertical feet lower than it is now. And the only explanation for the lake being lower in the past is a much drier climate. Right now you can see kind of a smattering of various stumps at the inlet and outlet. You look across the lake and you wonder, what are those things? But on closer investigation, if you have a canoe or a paddleboard when you're visiting Yosemite, you can go out to them and you'll find that they are several feet in diameter old trees just peeking out over the lake surface. They extended up quite a bit higher than they are now. That's all decayed away, but the wood that's under the lake is still preserved. When the water's clear and you look down, you can see that they're, they're big. I mean, they go down quite a ways and they disappear into the darkness of the lake and it's kind of spooky. When you look at the trees in Tenaya Lake, you would think that they were alive yesterday. Some of them are still rooted in the bottom. Some of them still have all the bark on them. It's really interesting to see and consider that they've actually been there for hundreds of years. One of the really unique things about Tenaya Lake is that it preserves the evidence of what we call the medieval warm period, a period of about 500 years that was between around 900 and 1300. The medieval dry period was actually classified by two separate droughts, each lasting over 100 years. Global temperatures were higher, as well as precipitation being lower, which actually allowed lake levels to drop low enough for a forest to grow at the bottom of the lake. Scientists have actually gone down and taken cores of those trees that died almost a thousand years ago 
and have used them to study the climate during the medieval warm period and understand the conditions during that period as well. So looking at this medieval warm period is one of the ways that we can better prepare and better understand for what conditions might be like moving forward. We're used to thinking about droughts in the context of two to five years, you know. 2012 to 2015, we experienced a drought in California. But what does it look like when that happens five-year period after five-year period after five-year period? That's when we get these things that scientists are starting to call mega droughts. What happened at Tenaya Lake hundreds of years ago was also classified as a mega drought. California has experienced a few drought years in the last decades. Imagine that extending for a hundred years. It's kind of scary actually to think about what a century long drought would do to the state of California. It would become a difficult place for 40 million people to live. But those are the kind of conditions that we know have happened because of these stumps sticking out of Tenaya Lake. They tell a unique and vital story about the changes that Yosemite National Park has experienced in the last thousand years.